Hey guys, good morning or afternoon. Um, today, we are going to be talking about the Tower of Babel, which is a pretty fascinating story in the Bible. Um, and it comes sometime after Noah. So we're going to look at why it was a terrible idea for them to build a tower and how it showed defiance against God that led to a terrible consequence. But before we do, quick reminder, please be kind and respectful. Stay engaged. We love to see your faces and we love to know that you're listening. Um, stay muted unless you raise your hand, use the chat, and ask questions. Please remember, you can ask whoever is leading this video session right now, or you can also message me via Schoology. I still have access to all um, our Bible course information, and so do you. So feel free, if you have any questions, you can shoot me a message on there via that email function. So we are going to start with our verse. Since this week is kind of a short week, we're going to do the same verse as last week. So I hope you remember your hand motions because I do not know what they are. So you are going to be the ones taking the lead. So I hope that you can all do your best to help out with this. So, um, oh, and then after we do the verse, whoop, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Okay. <laughs> after we do the verse, we'll jump into that lesson about the Tower of Babel. Um, and if there is work time, think what we're going to do today instead, we'll do some reflecting on that, but you are always welcome if we finish early to keep working on that Noah's Ark research project. So let's go ahead and jump in. Would anyone like to read the verse out loud for us today? We can pause right here and take a volunteer. Great. Thank you for reading. So my encouragement now is I'm going to read it through a second time, and I want you guys to lead with the motions. We're going to be watching your screens to see who remembers. Remember, doing hand motions along with the words helps you remember the words and helps you memorize the verse. And it's good to have scripture in your head for when you face hard times, it helps you to remember how to act and remember how to be confident in the fact that God is with you and not to be afraid and things like that. So. I'm gonna read slowly. Go ahead and do the motions with me. Or while I while I read, actually, because I'm not gonna do them. I don't remember them. Here we go. <laughs> do not let any bad talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. All right, good job. My hope is that some of you are getting to the point where you can say this without even looking. I know I'm pretty close. Okay, who would like to pray? Let's pause and take a volunteer here. All right, thank you to whoever prayed. That was wonderful. I'm sure. Okay, so we're not gonna ask quite yet, actually, who has the verse memorized. I'm gonna ask that, I think, tomorrow. If you guys think you can say it from memory, I'd be super impressed and we can pause and give you a moment to do that, but let's do that tomorrow. Okay, so question. How many of you have ever had a moment where you were not able to communicate because of a difference in languages? Maybe you were somewhere where people didn't speak English. Or maybe you were somewhere where they only spoke Spanish and you don't know Spanish, or maybe Chinese or some other language. There's so many in the world, like thousands. So how many have ever experienced that before? I have. It was a little scary. It's not always fun not being able to communicate, right? You feel kind of lost. So we're going to watch a short clip. Mr. Bean is going to illustrate this for us. But pay attention. Let's see if he actually knows what language he's speaking. Oops. Here we go. Okay. Was he speaking French the whole time? Who noticed? Was that last thing he said French? Thumbs up or thumbs down? No, he does not actually know French. He said gracias, which is Spanish at the end. So silly guy. He was just kind of defaulting to what he knew, which 
I have done before, so I can't judge him. All right, so now we need to think. This is, this is going to get you thinking about the context for our story today. What would it be like for a whole bunch of people who are working together that don't have a common language? What do you think that would be like? Could they think about people at a construction site? How would it be trying to build a project together if they couldn't communicate? Let's pause and take some volunteers either in the chat or you can um, take some volunteers with the hand raised and unmute for a moment. So I'm imagining that you guys thought and probably agree with me that it would be really hard if you wanted somebody to patch the nails and didn't know the word for nail in their language, it'd be a little challenging. So let's kind of keep that in mind as we jump into the context of our story. So instead of me telling the story today, I'm going to let this storyteller explain what happens at the Tower of Babel. You can read about this in Genesis chapter 10 is what I want to say. Shortly after, yeah, it would be 10 because Noah's story ends in 9. So this is a couple, wait, well, a couple generations after, but let's see what happens. So here's where we are in the story. After God made the world and everything in it, and after people messed it up and it wasn't perfect anymore, and after God decided to start the world over again with a flood, but saved Noah and his family, and after Noah's family had children, and they had children, and they had children, and they had children, and they had children, ch after all that, there were people on the earth again. Lots of people. And they all spoke the same language. Can you imagine that? Everybody could talk to everybody else without any problem. So they did, and they had lots of ideas. One day they said, hey, instead of using stones, let's make ourselves some bricks to build with. And they did. Then they said, hey, let's make a city and a tower so tall that it reaches to the sky. Because then we'll be famous and no, everybody will look up to us and want to be like us. And won't that be awesome? So they started building brick by brick, and the tower got taller, and they built ladders, and the tower got taller, and they built stairs, and the tower got taller. And they said, well, look at us. We really are something, aren't we? They were pretty happy with themselves. God knew his people were inventing bricks, building cities, and making towers, and he liked that. Because God loves creativity and ideas and new things, you know what he didn't like? They weren't making a tower to point people towards God. They were building it so that they would be the famous ones, and God knew that wouldn't be good for them. If they kept thinking they were more important than God, they would destroy themselves. And he loved them way too much to let them hurt that way. So he stopped them by confusing them. One day, as they were living in their city, making their bricks and building their tower, something happened. Suddenly, they didn't all speak the same language anymore. Pourquoi? Oh no. Donde esta el gato? Que? Vas? Mespa? They all spoke completely different languages. Suddenly, Maybe one guy spoke Swahili, and another spoke Italian, and another spoke Mandarin. Vish bevestas! What are you saying? Suddenly, it was really hard to work together. Me amo Dora, no entiendo. Oh, They would misunderstand each other. Vish bevestas! I don't understand you. Or accidentally say something they didn't mean to. What did you just say? Hasta la vista. It made it hard to keep building their super tall tower. They couldn't make big plans to be as famous as God anymore. So they stopped building their city, and everyone went in different directions. They scattered across the whole earth. The place where God confused people with different languages was called Babel. And that's where we get the word Babel, you know, like, blah, 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 blah. God knew his people needed him, not a tower. They needed a rescuer. And God had a plan to do exactly that. And I can't wait for you to hear that part of the story. Okay, wondering quickly, do any of you think you know what she was talking about at the end of the video? With a hand raised, who do you think is that rescuer, the rescuer that she was talking about? Go ahead and we can call in somebody if you think you know. If you said Jesus, 
you are absolutely right. So Jesus is the ultimate rescuer in this story. But let's kind of reflect back for a second and think. Did anyone catch? Raise your hand if you think you know. What or why was it wrong for the people to build the tower? Why were they building it? Why was it wrong? Go ahead, we'll pause here and take some suggestions. Great, so while we're thinking about why it was wrong, we have to look back at the people's intention, right? So they had said in their hearts that they wanted to build a tower that would reach up to heaven because they wanted to be like God. If you remember, we've heard that phrase before, and I'm hoping that your wheels are turning or are making some connections because remember that's why Satan got thrown out of heaven because he wanted to be like God, and that's why Adam and Eve messed up and ate from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because they wanted to be like God. And it never goes well, does it? And so while the people were trying to make a name for themselves, they were leaning in on their own strength. They were being self-reliant and they were completely rejecting God. They had completely forgotten about him and they like ceased to create any room for recognition of who he was. And unfortunately, we know that the stuff, like the civilization around the tower started to get really evil again, just like it had before the flood. And so God got a little worried and concerned for people and was like, they are so unified that whatever they set their minds to, they're going to be able to accomplish. And they weren't accomplishing good things. So who caught, what does God do? Let's pause here and ask, what did God do to stop them? from being unified in building the tower. Anyone know? Raise your hand. Yeah, he confused their languages. And so the people no longer could stay in the same place. They were forced to go out. If you remember back to Noah's story, God actually told Noah and his descendants or his family when they got off the ark to be fruitful, multiply, and to fill the earth. These people, not only were they being prideful and ignoring God, they also were disobeying God's command to fill the earth. And now, because God confused their language, they had to. So, um, we're, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to show you that. <laughs> when you guys get back, we can do it, um, that project again, perhaps. But um, instead, what I'm gonna say is, now we have some work time. I'm gonna post some questions for reflection, maybe just work on two of them, um, and try and jot down some thoughts and think about why this story is significant um, as we're looking at just how civilization came to be, we're going to continue to kind of zoom in. Actually, that picture that I showed or that I have on this side, slide, cannot talk today, <laughs> is a picture of a ziggurat. Um, tomorrow, we are going to look at some of the civilizations that popped up after this. Um, and we're going to look at somebody who came out of one of those civilizations who's very important to the rest of the biblical story. So again, like I said before, the Bible is, is a book of history as well. It reveals who God is and who we are in him and what he designed us for. But it also, it also reveals to us kind of how civilization in the world came to be. And it's kind of fun to partner up with archaeology and look back. So we'll continue to dig into this. But for now... Go ahead and take a moment to reflect on these questions. Um, we will push out the link to the Schoology assignment for you so that you can start working on this. So I look forward to reading your responses. Have a good afternoon, you guys. Bye.